Today we are going to see how to summon creatures. It's a very useful effect for when you need some kind of animal or creature in one of your abilities. In my case I'm using a running tiger, but you can use pretty much any creature you want, and I'm gonna show you how. And if you wanna get your hands on this ability on this project, it's all available on my Patreon's page, links below. So without further ado, let's jump right into this, but first, today we have a Brilliant sponsor. Brilliant is an app and website that lets you grab knowledge interactively, which is the best way to learn anything, because you are going to learn by doing yourself. It will teach you how to solve problems in a fun way, and improve your critical thinking, which is such an important skill for example for game developers. I actually find Brilliant super cool and almost learn something new every other day and it sticks with me thanks to the interactive exercises. I love the scientific thinking course I finished recently and I gotta say anything related to space is awesome, because you see through the end of the course it was all related to space solving problems, how light bends or how light travels. There's this cool one where you witness a spaceship battle, which is strictly illegal in this hypothetical scenario and you are invited as a witness to the court to establish who shot their laser beams first from your point of view. It's just a brilliant way to begin the theory of relativity. You guys got to try this, it's free for 30 days, so visit brilliant.org slash gabrielagiaprod or click the link below. The first 200 will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So as you must imagine we need a 3D model of the beast of the creature of the animal that you want to summon. In my case I went to Sketchfab and searched for running tiger. I was looking for a running cycle of any kind of animal and I found this one. You can download it right here, probably need to create an account. If you download don't forget to credit the creator. We want the FBX version of this. It will download zip file. Once you have unzipped this, you can drag and drop this FBX model to your Unity project. And here we go. The tiger is running in Unity. I'm just gonna turn on loop time for the run animation because I want this cycle to keep on looping, right? And now to create the effect we are going to start with an empty game object. We can rename it to VFX underscore tiger attack because in my case it's a tiger. I'm gonna reset the transform and parent the tiger FBX. This tiger right here is way too big, as you can see. So I'm going to decrease the scale to 0 0.5 on all of the axes, right? And now, as you can see, it doesn't have any animator. And it's really important, we need an animator. So I'm going to go ahead to the model, and in the Rig tab, I'm going to say the avatar definition is created from this model, and then press apply. So it creates the avatar, and now it has an animator, the tiger. We just need an animator controller now. Right click, animator controller, rename it, and drag and drop it to your tiger, to your beast. I'm gonna double click the animate control because now I only need this to create a new empty state for the run cycle and assign the run animation that came with this model. And that's it. If I press play now, the tiger is running. Cool. That's the first part, we are going to make this move forward, but first let's take care of the aspect, so let's create a shader. I'm gonna go ahead, right click, create a blank shader graph, and rename it to Tiger Shader. By the way, if you want to use the Galaxy Shader that I have demonstrated in the beginning, it's available from this tutorial that I did a while back, and it will work very nice with this tiger for example, or other animals. I have linked below the tutorial in case you are interested. Or else you can follow this shader, it's going to be very simple. We are going to now say the active target is universal and unlit. Allow material override, so we can change this in the inspector in case we need it. And basically all we gotta do is create a Fresnel effect, spacebar to search for it, and multiply this with a color. So I'm gonna create a color property up here and then a float for the Fresnel power with a default value of 1. 
because we want to control this, right? It's useful. So let's drag the color right here, say the mode it's HDR and color white with alpha at 100 and multiply these two together and connect to the base color of the fragment function and save this asset. And that's it, we can create a material out of this shader. And then assign it to our tiger with the skinned mesh renderer. This one. Replace this material. Here we go. Now it's all a matter of choosing the color you like the most, right? I'm gonna stick with the purple that I've used previously and increase the intensity. I have a global volume with bloom, by the way. That's why it's glowing, looking nice. Okay, so that's one of the first steps for the shader. Let's go ahead and create a prefab out of this VFX underscore tiger attack. And now for the second part of the shader, and in case you followed the galaxy shader, you are also going to need this, it's the erode effect. We are going to use a noise, you can search for it with spacebar, you can try these three noises, but I'm going to use the simple noise, and say the scale is 30, and connect this to the alpha. Now it's very important that in the graph inspector, we turn on alpha clipping, and as you can see it erodes away immediately, because alpha clip threshold is bigger than zero. So we are going to control this with a float, you can call it erode, and say it's a slider between zero and one. Connect it to the alpha clip threshold and save this shader. Once you go back to your tiger, to the material, if you play with the road and nothing happens, that's because you also need to turn on alpha clipping on the material. Exactly, and here we go, it's eroding away. Very nice. So now let's see how we can control this erode via script. It's going to be very simple, guys, nothing too fancy. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a C sharp script. Call it the tiger attack, for example. And assign it to the prefab. Drag and drop it. Double click on the script to open this up. And we are essentially going to need a couple of floats. First float is for the road rate, by default 0 0.03. Second float is for the erode refresh rate at 0 0.01. And then Another float for erode delay, after how much time we want to start eroding. Which I'm gonna say it's 1.25. And then a public skinned mesh renderer. Because that's the component the tiger is using, and we want to access the material of the skinned mesh renderer. Right, so on the script I'm gonna call this the erode object. Let's delete this and create an I enumerator called erode object. And this needs to know after how much time are we going to start eroding the object. We can use a yield return, new wait for seconds, erode delay, and then create a float, t, that starts at zero, no erosion, and we say while t is smaller than one, we are going to increment it by the erode rate value. And then we are going to go ahead and access the material of the road object, because it's a skin and mesh renderer. And set float, we can manipulate values of the material. Open brackets, underscore erode, and pass the t value. This underscore erode is this reference right here of the erode property. It must be the same name. You can rename this reference, by the way. But what's important is that in the script it's the same name as this reference, right? Then we wait a tiny amount of time, which is the refresh rate, yield return new, wait for seconds, erode refresh rate. And to quickly test this out, I'm gonna call this start coroutine on the start function. Exactly like this, erode object. Save the script, go to the VFX tiger attack and assign the skin and mesh renderer and apply the changes to the prefab. And now, if you press play, it erodes away. It's also very big. Basically, the 0 0.5 of the scale that I've set it before, it's not working. In my case, because I need to create an empty. Inside the prefab, reset the transform, make sure the scale is 1, 1, 1, that's very important. And parent this tiger right here. Inside the scale here is 1. 
but on the game object it's 0 0.5 on all axes. Save the prefab, and now if I press play it keeps the same scale and it erodes away, which is exactly what we needed and want. Awesome, looking good. Now it would be awesome if we could move this, right? If we could fire this like a projectile. So I'm going to show you my setup that I have here in my scene. I have a game object, the FPS character, with a character controller, which comes with Unity, and then a camera and a fire point inside this game object. There's also this first person control script, which you can find this script pretty much anywhere on the internet. You can copy it if you want. And then there's this other script, the Tiger Attack Shooter, which is a stupid name, by the way. But essentially, this will fire any given projectile. We have a camera, we have a projectile, a fire point, which is a transform, a fire rate. But basically, every time we press the fire button, there's a timer, and then we call the shoot projectile function, which will essentially see if there is a camera, and then it will shoot a ray from the center of the camera to the infinite. And then we save a point on that ray to the destination, and we call instantiate projectile, which will basically instantiate the given projectile, the prefab. We will access the tiger attack script in this case, so we can get the speed of the projectile and pass it to the rigid body of the projectile. And then we rotate to destination. As you can see, it only rotates in the Y. There's a quaternion lerp here, and that's pretty much it. You can copy this whole script, you can pause this video and copy it. In our tiger attack script, for example, we would need a float speed and a destroy delay, which is going to be used in start and it will destroy this game object after the destroy delay. In my specific case, I have to change the tiger attack shooter to work with this script, so I'm going to copy this to test this really quick. Paste it here, it here, and there. In the FPS character, I'm going to assign the prefab we have created for this tutorial. And on the tire attack prefab, I'm going to assign a rigid body with no gravity. And that's it. If you are using the shooter script that I've showed you and the FPS character, now you can press play and you can shoot flying cats, flying tigers anywhere you want, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, that's the easy way to shoot things in this case. If you want something a little bit more deep, there's this script, which is a tiger attack, the original one. By the way, the names of these scripts are completely wrong. But essentially, this will snap the prefab to the ground. It's the same script I have used for this video, the ground slash. Yeah. We can slow down, we can detach objects, and we erode, like we did. But in this case, I erode in the beginning as well. I'm going to use this script now because it's a little bit more advanced. And I'm going to revert the changes in the shooter script. And on my prefab, I'm going to disable this tutorial script and assign the tiger attack script. Say the speed is 13, slow down, rate at 0 0.012. It's a few values that I've tested. So this looks nice. If you want to copy them, destroy delay. Objects to detach. It's going to be useful in a moment. I'm going to show you. And then the erode options and the object to erode. I need to enter in prefab mode and assign the tiger. All right. If you test this out now, the tiger now follows the ground, it snaps to the ground, which is awesome. That's great, now we can test this with some particles, with a trail of particles, for example. I'm going to use a VFX graph, right click. And I'm going to parent this to the prefab right here in the scene. I will apply the changes in a moment. Essentially, we need to center this with our creature. More or less in the middle, yep. And then press the edit button to open VFX graph. You can see if you move this around, it doesn't leave any trail of particles. The trick here is to turn on world right here. And then use a set position or a set sphere, for example. But in local mode. Set the radius to 0 0.1. And the W here is set to world. If we click it, we can change it to local. That's important. And now you can drag this around and it will leave particles behind. Let's make a few adjustments here. For example, how much time this is going to emit particles. Let's create a float duration. And in spawn, the loop duration is going to be constant. And loop count constant as well. And now we can connect this duration. 
which we can say it's a second and a half, for example. Increase the rate, for example, the capacity as well. Obviously, this will impact the performance, so be careful. And let's take care of the aspect down here real quick. Set size random. We're doing something like 0 0.008 and 0 0.04. Size of our lifetime from big to small, but it must be in multiply the composition. And then we can switch this part to the default particle that comes with Unity, for example. Set the color here to a purple in my case, and increase intensity. You guys can play with this and personalize it even more, but that's essentially it. I'm just going to adjust the speed up here to to be minus 0 0.5 in all of the axes and 0 0.5 in all of the axes, a minimum and a maximum. Yeah. Or you can use the turbulence down here and say the intensity is random between minus 5 and 5, something like that, for example. And you can even use both if you want the velocity and the turbulence. Yeah, save this. Apply the changes to the prefab, disable this on the scene and press play because we are going to shoot these prefabs, right? And if we test this out, the tiger is leaving a trail of particles, looks nice, but as you can see they disappear out of nowhere and the particles get also destroyed. That's why it's useful to have this function to detach objects, a list of objects that we want to detach and destroy them after a moment. I'm gonna go to the prefab and assign the VFX graph to the list of objects to detach. It's set to detach a second and a half later and everything together will fit really nice. As you can see now we can shoot tigers and particles. They stay a little bit and then it gets destroyed, the VFX graph. Right, that's awesome. Now you can summon a tiger, you can add a few trails. By the way, you can use this tutorial to create trails, awesome trails. I'll uh, link below. I made it a while back and it's awesome information for you. And yeah, that's pretty much it in this case. I hope this guides you in the right direction how to summon creatures. And I made it all available on my Patreons page in case you guys want to get this and test it out. Links below. Your support will mean a lot. And I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Alexander Brazy, Alper Arichai, Achilles Benitez, Aviat Tobali, Baz, Christopher Vivas, Kruby Dubidu, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Diaku, Diego Marcos, Duitron, Effect Yellow, L. El Sharif, Easy, Fang Striker, Gabriel, Julio Benvenuti, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Jason Marrero, Joe Arcash, Casey Miller, Karen Campe, Curbs J, Leon Holt, Natuli, Lulu Vrumet, Manuel Mora, Mark Anum, Ozen and Safdra, Naru, Neogentrix, NR, Oitsk, Pradip Sen, Q216, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Roit Gupta, Very Suta, Wu Ming, Will Hughes, Will Poilian, Dang Mag Dang, and Chiang Pyongling. Thank you all for your amazing support, it means a lot. I hope you have all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on next video. Thanks, bye!